I mean, I mean, uh, that's totally up to you. I, I yeah. had really two questions. You know, I kind of wanted to talk about your background, how you started, you know, Lilac and you, you were a chemical engineer and philosophy major, and then you started Lilac and then you started Jade Cove and what the future of that looks like. And then I guess if you push your call back, I, I, I'll save that question for the last one. But before that, I wanted to ask also, you know, other than this electricity to heat problem, what is the other billion dollar, like, what would you, what, what's your like wish? For what are the, the other, what are the other project? questions? The yeah. other questions I'm asking, yeah. Okay, so, 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 so my story at a super high level, so I am from the country north of Toronto, about an hour north. I grew up, I grew up kind of in, like playing in mud in the fields, building forts and diverting rivers and collecting rocks. And so <laughs> it actually, it actually was surprisingly formative. And I, I, I graduated from high school and then went for my undergrad in Montreal at McGill, where I, I was going to study physics and philosophy and Someone's mom was like, what are you going to do with that? So I switched to chemical engineering and philosophy. So, so yeah, so I, I did, that was my major and minor. And throughout undergrad, I was doing academic uh, and industrial research in wastewater treatment and water chemistry. And so I've been studying uh, kind of water related processes for my entire adult life, like a decade, basically. And I, I but I, I kind of got tired of cleaning up other people's messes. So I went for a PhD at Northwestern in Chicago to study CO2 conversion heterogeneous catalysis. So this is the idea of, of using kind of special materials that, that, that make CO2 plus hydrogen reactions move much faster to make certain products. And so I, I thought I was interested in this concept of, of the solar fuels kind of cycle where you would use something like methanol or DMO or formaldehyde in, in, a, in a kind of new kind of engine and combust it with oxygen and release CO2 and then capture it again, split water to make hydrogen and oxygen, re-react it and, and repeat using renewable energy presumably. But, and, and that was really fun. Like I built like, I built like a high pressure, high temperature reactor and a gas chromatography machine. And I learned so much about physical chem chemistry and, and analytical procedures and all these things that, that I, I still, I still use today. It's, it was very helpful, but, but I realized that the solar fuel cycle was probably not a good way to store energy for ground transport. Lithium ion batteries and electric vehicles are, is, is a thousand times better. And, and that applies to the hydrogen fuel cell concept too, by the way, if anyone wants to Google what I'm talking about hydrogen, yeah. <laughs> just had to share on hydrogen a little bit, but, but anyway, so I, I, I left my PhD, well, to back up, I, I was hired in grad school to run a seminar series that was put on by the engineering PhD students for the business school, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone was invited, but it was like mostly like Kellogg MBA students who didn't know anything about technology or energy technology or anything. Of course. And I, I was hired to, to take that over from a graduating PhD student who was, who was finishing his PhD in material science. Uh, named Dave, super brilliant guy, very insightful. And, 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 I, and I started chatting with Dave about where the lithium was gonna come from for, for, for manufacturing all these batteries for electric vehicles. And he, he basically invited me to meet in the library in grad school. And this was, this was in like 2016. So this was uh, five years ago now. And, 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 and he, he told me a bit about some ideas he was having around, around lithium extraction. And then, you know, he, he essentially, he asked me if I wanted to work on it. And I said, absolutely. And this is fascinating. So, so that, that project that, that really started in 2016 and it turned into Lilac Solutions. So I left my PhD with a master's to, to help start Lilac. And yeah, so, so that became Lilac and, and Lilac raised uh, a $20 million series A in announced in February, 2020, that was led by Breakthrough Energy Ventures, which is Bill Gates' climate fund. So that was that was kind of my my entry point into lithium and and mining, and and that was an opportunity where that was a place where I taught myself a lot about a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. So we were like a three three four person startup at, at the start, right? So you know I was I was the only engineer really, and so I I built all of these kind of automated systems to to demonstrate the technology, which which is requisite for for proving the, the value proposition of the technology. So I taught myself like how to program like PLCs and how to do kind of basic electrical engineering, like nothing sophisticated nice. at that time. I'm sure it's evolved since I left. But, but I taught myself a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff around like physical chemistry and hydrometallurgy, which is really like aqueous phase mineral processing. And, and it was a lot of fun, you know, a lot like sleeping in the lab a bunch of times, making sure the robots were doing what they were supposed to do and taking samples and stuff. And very, very early stage startup kind of. It's a um, common theme. Aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> well, when, when it's got to work, it's got to work, right? You sleep in the mm -hmm. lab. That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so, 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 so that was my time of life, but, but I, 
I really wanted to have a broader impact um, across lithium and across battery metals and, and beyond. So I left, I left actually almost exactly two years ago to, to kind of start my own company, consulting across lithium. And part of what I did over the last two years was, was develop a really deep global insight into all the different types of direct lithium extraction technologies. And so, so that research and, and that understanding and that for kind of first principles informed insight has, has, has created a lot of value for, for some of the folks I work with. So I'm, I'm super proud of that. And, and a big part of also what I've been doing over, over the last two years is I, I mentioned Minvaro in London a little, a little while back is working with them on life cycle assessment. And, and, and it, it, I'm working with this really smart guy named Rob who did his PhD in, in, L, in LCA of mining in the UK. And we've been, we've been doing life cycle assessments in the lithium industry for projects and development. So, so these are folks who are trying to build lithium mines or, or, you know, lithium brine extraction projects or, or, you know, or lithium processing facilities. And they want to understand what are the hotspots in their environmental impact and kind of profile, right? And so, you know, what are the top three or five things that drive their CO2 intensity or water use or whatever it may be? So, so, so we build a life cycle assessment model, which informs them of where they kind of need to look to, to mitigate those impacts. So, you know, my, my kind of mission is, is to build the best battery supply chain possible because <laughs> we all, we deserve that. The world deserves that, right? Like For we sure. owe it, we owe it to the people buying electric vehicles to, to do that. Right. And, 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 and I really feel like Pro is really operationalizing a, a, a really important part of that, which is to quantify and understand environmental impacts. And then, you know, kind of part two is, well, okay, I have, I have an impact because of technology X, Y, Z in my process. What are alternative technologies? that I could use to perform that function in my process, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this kind of brings me to part, your, your second question, I guess, right? What's um, the golden fleece? <laughs> the, the, well, the, the, the interesting opportunities, in my opinion, are, are those which reduce environmental impacts, right? So whether that's reducing CO2 emissions of a process like electrifying or, you know, other schemes for, I'm just kind of like brainstorming off the top sure. of my, off the, off my cut That's here. That's the best but like, way to do like these. Other, uh, basically other schemes to produce low grade heat that don't require fossil fuels, right? Anywhere, anywhere that diesel or, or methane or coal um, or, or, or oil or, or any fossil fuel is used in a process or a mine, identify what are the opportunities to, to remove it from the process, right? That's the algorithm. That's the objective function. So, so, so that's a big part of it. And, and then water is a big part of it too. So in mining and mineral processing, you always use fresh water, always. Anyone who tells you that they don't use any water in their process, either, you know, doesn't understand their own process or, or they don't understand it yet, or they're lying. It's, it's one of those two. And so it'll always use water. So, so the goal is not to use no water because it's, it's pretty much impossible in almost all cases. The, the goal is to minimize the amount of water we use, right? And, and potentially use, you know, maybe brackish water instead of fresh water, for example, things like that, right? Because like a brackish water, which has maybe 0.5% salt instead of fresh water, which has 0.1% salt, right? Like you can't use that brackish water for agriculture or you know, mm -hmm. animals probably aren't drinking it in, in most cases. And, you know, like if you can sub out fresh water for brackish water, right? That's an improvement in terms of the processes impact on water availability for animals and people and agriculture and, and plants, right? So, so CO2 and water are really the main kind of pain points in, in lithium processing and, and in, in all mining and, and mineral processing. So, so yeah, so, so things which which reduce CO2 emissions and which reduce water use are, are valuable. And, and, and we could use some more breakthrough technologies on both those fronts. And, and, and yeah, again, if, if anyone wants to reach out with, with ideas or questions on that, you know, ha happy to chat. I'm, I'm always happy to kind of help energetic, motivated young people with, with interesting ideas to succeed because, you know, so many people have helped me along the way. And, uh, and it, it's, it's really, it's really a pleasure to be able to kind of give back and really start giving back as soon as I can. Um, For sure. So, so, so it's not, not like a Holy Grail membrane. <laughs> 